Okay, so hello everyone. <clears throat> Today I'll be introducing Talos to say a simulator for Markovian queuing networks. And one notable feature about Talos to say is that it includes a method for accelerating these simulations known as Tal leaping. So background on Talos to say it's primarily intended to be used with the line solver, but it can also be used as a standalone tool. And background online is a MATLAB library for analyzing systems using queuing theory and simulation. And it includes both a uh, both a extensive object model describing extended queuing models, as well as interfaces with a variety of internal and third-party solvers. And one of these solvers is now Tal SSA. And it's implemented in Java, it includes partial redevelopment of several core line classes and primarily simulates using the SSA algorithm known as Gillespie's algorithm as well as Tau Leaping. And because of these constraints at the moment, it only considers Markovian distribution such as exponential Erlang as well as Markovian tribal processes, but a future iteration might include more approximations of other distributions. And in terms of performance, in some situations it can offer up to 100 times the performance of Lines native SSA solver, and with another 25 to 50% time savings using Tau Leaping. And down here below is the link to GitHub. And here's an example of the output, including Q-Link utilization, response time, residence time, and throughput for a sample of closed queuing network with two classes. And the time for the simulation is 20, 48 milliseconds for 10,000 samples. So the motivation behind this tool is to simply give the user more control uh, over the simulation and offer uh, more opportunities to trade some accuracy for time savings. For example, if they want to perform some hyperparameter tuning of the model and a brief introduction to Tau Leaping is an extension of the SSA algorithm introduced by Gillespie in 2001. And the idea behind this is to take a sample interval of a predetermined size on this Tau and calculate the number of repetitions for each event within this interval and apply them simultaneously. The main advantage for this in reactions is that it avoids ex expensive rate calculations. However, rate calculations are quite cheap in these kinds of queuing models, but we're still considering it because it might save time with updating the metrics, updating the state, or updating the timeline. And we'll include later analysis to see how this can be used to accelerate queuing simulations. And the algorithm works by starting off at a certain state with a predetermined step size tau and the exponential rate for each transition in this case, transition includes a departure from a certain node in arrival into the system or a change in the phase of an Erlang or a Markov arrival process. And then it uses this rate to generate a Poisson random variable for each of these transitions. And this Poisson random variable uh, represents the number of times each of these, this, these events will be fired. And then after doing that, you simply update the state and add tau to the simulation time and then repeat the next iteration. However, <clears throat> there's a couple of concerns that need to be addressed here. One is the way that these events are ordered and the, the, the performance metrics are often quite sensitive to the ordering of these events. For example, if we look at a simple MM1 queue with two jobs in inside and the tally leaping algorithm suggests that there should be two arrivals and three departures. Well, if departures are processed first, then the ending state is X equals two. However, if arrivals are processed before departures, then the ending state is X equals one jobs at the queue. And this can actually create bias in the performance metrics at the end. And the problem of course compounds as you start to consider networks of queues as departures from one station become arrivals at others. So here we have defined a number of strategies for ordering. The quite possibly the most simple one and the most obvious one is random event. And this simply involves shuffling the event list at each iteration. And this is what would be truest to standard simulation principles, but it 
might be a bit slower as the simulator needs to spend the time to shuffle the event. So one alternative we looked at is what's called the random event fixed method, which Sorry, I just got a notification. Can everyone see? Can everyone hear me? I just got a notification. Yes, we can hear you, but uh, from my side, I have lost your screen sharing. Okay. And also, we don't see your camera. Same here. Okay, I just got a notification on my phone saying that the Wi Fi shut off, but if it's working on my computer, that's fantastic. Unfortunately, it's um, not allowing me to share my video, but. Um, here, let me try a few more seconds. Terribly sorry about that. Hopefully it's working now. And then I'll continue where I left off. We can see your camera, but it's, oh yes, now also the screen is yep. screen. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, terribly sorry about that. Um, we'll start presenting from here. And so where we left off is we were talking about the random event fix method, which involves shuffling the event less at the beginning of the simulation and carrying that ordering throughout. And it might be a bit faster, but also introduces more bias, but it could be appropriate for experiments with high numbers of runs. Another approach that we analyzed was considering the QE networks as a directed graph and then applying a topological starting to this and then applying each event in the order of this topological sorting. In this case, we used a variation of Khan's algorithm. And for example, in this network here, it would be station one followed by station two followed by station three, or station one followed by station three followed by station two, and that would apply the sorting throughout. <clears throat> and this is sensitive to the topology of the network, and it ensures that arrivals are generally processed before departures which is favorable if there's no capacities in each of the queues, but it could also um, create a little bit of upward bias and it might be unsuitable for models with cycles or with capacities. And then a further extension to kind of mitigate these issues is what we call the directed cycle. So it still uses a topological starting, but it cycles through the list as the iteration, as the simulation progresses by moving the first event to the end of the list at each iteration. And this ended up being the best performing in our experimental evaluation, but one possible extension of this is to consider the rates as well. Another issue that needs to be considered is invalid states. So oftentimes tau leaping will require um, more arrivals into a queue than the capacity would allow or more departures that would turn the number of jobs to be negative. So here I'll discuss two methods to handle illegal states. The obvious answer is what you'd call cutoff, and this only allows repetitions that do not create an illegal state. So X is set to be the X, in this case, the number of jobs is set to be the maximum of X and zero, and then the minimum of the ending X and the capacity. And this is a very obvious solution. It might cause distortion in some distributions. Another option that we considered is to loop through the event less twice. On the first pass, apply the maximum number of repetitions that do not generate an illegal state. And then on the second pass through the event less to try to apply any remaining repetitions. The idea behind this is if there's not enough departures from a certain queue, the idea is that an arrival in the future might allow that. So this might allow for a strictly closer approximation of the number of events generated by the tau leaping algorithm. And it's also less sensitive to the event order, but it also might be slower. And this actually performed worse in our experimental evaluation. In this experiment, we analyzed five MM1 queues with random topologies, one open class and random event rates. And we used the mean accuracy percentage error of the queue length to analyze the accuracy. And in this case, we are comparing the SSA algorithm with tau leaping. And each of these colors represents what we're going to call a configuration. And a configuration consists of an ordering strategy and a state strategy. You'll notice that the markers uh, represent the methods of determining tau, either varying it with the maximum rate, the minimum rate, or the average rate. 
but one notable conclusion is that since they all fall along the same curves, we were unable to decide between the different methods of tau. But what we did learn is that the directed cycle and cutoff method systematically dominates all the configurations and therefore it's used as a default in the line software package. And based on this curve, we decided that 1.5 divided by the average rate was a very attractive trade-off between accuracy and time, and that is included as the default in line. And in conclusion, we have proposed Tau SSA, a queuing simulator with SSA and Tau leaping, and we found that this can significantly accelerate queuing simulations with careful attention to the event ordering, state strategy, and Tau with accuracy trade-offs. Some future work might include automated methods to determine Tau other than simply using the parameterization earlier and then investigation of other um, extended queuing network nodes, processing regimes and distributions. Anyways, thank you. Hope you enjoyed it.